Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on fold over design. So far um, in last few lectures we have completed rather we can say we have discussed 2 to the power k minus p fractional factorial design fractional factorial design. Okay. So, what you have seen that in the very basic lecture which we have given you 2 to the power 3 minus 1 fractional factorial design and where the defining relation was i equal to a b c and we have that we have see, taken that i equal to in fact plus minus a b c and the first fraction is i equal to a b c and second fraction is i equal to minus a b c and we have discussed the concept called sequential experimentation sequential experimentation okay so this uh, sequential experimentation can be done or is done depending on the purposes that you want to fulfill so in more general way this can be expressed as or this can be achieved by fold over design fold over design so what are the uh, um, important issues in fold over design let us see the slide first and uh, let us start with an example suppose you are interested in a resolution 3 design and the case for demonstration is 2 to the power 7 minus 4 resolution 3 design. If I say 2 to the power 7 minus 4 resolution 3 design, 2 to the power 7 minus 4 resolution 3 design, 2 to the power 7 minus 4 resolution 3 design and here you see that what is the number of generators p p equal to 4 what is the number of factors k k equal to 7 what is the number of runs n n equal to 2 to the power 3 7 minus 4 equal to 2 to the power 3 equal to 8 this is a case where k equal to n minus 1. So, this type of design is known as also called saturated design saturated design. So, how do you construct this design? First it should be a two basic design will be 2 to the power 3. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus 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 minus minus plus plus minus 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 plus 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 and then then remaining how many factors are there so d will be one factor so there will be seven factors a b c d e a b c d e f g 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so, you, you, you how many parameters you require to estimate here 7 accepting uh, that one the mean value because a parameters usually in this case you have found out in if it is a 2 to the power 3 design we estimate a b a b c a c b c a b c. So, a fine b fine 
C fine. Now, this can be a b can be uh, I can say that a b can be confounded with d, a c can be confounded with e, b c can be confounded with f, a b c can be confounded with g. So, that means, this equal to a b, this equal to e equal to a c, um, f equal to b c and g equal to a b c. So, this is your design now. So, 2 to the power 4 minus design. Now, you know how to get the signs for d, b, c all those things. So, multiplying a, b all this. this is what is what is the construction. Hmm. Then, if you do the experimentation, what will happen? You will get some y value, y total value. So, now what will be this, what will be this all those things. Suppose, if you full, if you fill off all the plus minus here, you will get this structure. You see a b plus minus minus plus plus like this. So, the run first run where d e f positive. So, you are writing that is d e f second run a f g. So, that means, these are the these, these are the treatment combinations. Okay. And on other words also, this will denote the total of responses that is what we have seen in the first lecture on, uh, on this issue. Okay. So, it is it is obviously a resolution 3 design and uh, because if you see find out the defi defining relation d equal to a b d a b mean a b d is 1 from E you are getting A C E, from A F you are getting B C F, from G you are getting A B C G. Plus, if you multiplied this, this A B D and A C E, if you multiplied A A will cancel out B C D E, B C D E. So, you multiplied these two, so A B will be cancelled out, then A C D F. A C D F multiplied this A B D and A B A B will cancel out C D G C D G. So, similarly multiplied these two multiplied these two multiplied these two you will be getting few more. Okay. So, so fine. So, you will be having uh, different generators. Now, we all know that to the p plus 2 to the power p minus p minus 1 number of defining relations you will be getting. Okay. Now, using this design, if you run the experiment and what results you get from estimation of main effects point of view, considering the interaction effects are Ne, uh, higher order interaction effects means third and higher, higher order interactions are negligible. So, what will be the alias structure? So, your alias structure will be suppose if we if we uh, neglect the third and higher order interactions, then you will see, you will see that your alias structure will be A will be aliased with B D C E and F G. B will be aliased with B, A, D, C, F, E, G, C like this. So, this is your alias structure and how you get the alias structure all of you know you just multiply the defining relation relation by the particular factor. If you multiplied A with A, B, D then you will be getting B, D, A with A, C, E you will be getting C, A with B, C, F you will be getting C, F. A equal to A B C G, you will be getting uh, A B C G means you will be getting I equal to A the B C G that is not the third order, you do not require. So, this is what is the alias structure you are getting. So, all the main effects are aliased with second order interaction effects, cannot estimate uniquely. So, under such situation what you require? You require sequential experimentation if you want to uniquely estimate the main effects 
or, or some of the interaction effects. So, this sequential experimentation is possible by switching over the sign of the basic designs. For example, if here A is minus plus this is the case. So, if you if you just switch over the sign but reverse the sign either may be the one effect one factor or may be all the factors or may be combination of factors when you reverse the sign sign from the first fraction then what will happen you will have a pos you have you will get get another set of experimental data and the combining the two you will be able to de alias some of the effects primarily we are interested to de alias the main effects and second order interaction effects because third and higher order effects we usually consider they may be negligible considering the sparsity of effect principle, but many a times third order and higher order may be important and in that case the switching of the sign will be accordingly done. Okay. So, this kind of design when you you do one fraction of experiment, then when you go for the next fraction which is required. So, depending on the purpose you switch over the sign of one or more factors and then this kind of design is known as fold over design. So, basically you are folding over to another uh, side. So, the, the two extreme of fold over design is single factor fold over and full fold over. Okay. So, let us see one interesting example here. This example we have discussed earlier also uh, to the power 7 minus 3 we have discussed okay. this, this we have not discussed we have discussed resolution 4 1 here it is the this design is 2 to the power 7 minus 4 resolution 3 design. This is what uh, I think the okay to the same, same thing same design. So, here what happened when you use the first fraction where a b c d like this and correspondingly confounding other other main effects with some interaction effects and you are generating uh, the plus psi algebraics that sign conversion table or I can say design matrix. Okay. Now, here what happened suppose you do one thing you do the sign reversal for D sign reversal for D. If you do the sign reversal for D so plus minus minus plus plus minus minus like this this will be reversed to minus plus plus minus minus like this. Then what happened your earlier you see what what was there here you have taken d equal to a b then what you are doing here d equal to minus a b. Okay. So, instead of d equal to a b here it will be minus a b and all other things remain same. Now, if you use this and if you do the uh, experimentation so here d f that you in the first experimentation you will get this alias structure when you go for the second experimentation you will be getting this alias structure you see what is happening here wherever d is there that minus n is coming the first fraction is giving a plus b d plus c e plus f g now b d here it is minus similarly here a d is minus and here no a d g is minus and here d is plus all other minors or if you say minus d then it is minus d and all other plus. So, if you do minus d if you make it minus minus d is d plus then this is the case. So, that means we are basically talking about a single factor uh, sign reversal case here. So, that is why related to d the plus is becoming minus and accordingly this is the alias structure. So, this is basically single fold over because you have done the sign reversal of one factor that is d. Now, 
from the first fraction the LS structure is this right hand side. Second uh, fraction when you will go for uh, sign reversal of column D, this is the LS structure. If you if you use these two and do little arithmetic operations, what you are getting? You are getting that for you see that D is D aliased. The main effect D is D aliased and A, B, C other things are uh, aliased with A is aliased with some other uh, second order interactions and uh, other, other main effects are also aliased with some other second order interactions, but some of the second order interactions are not aliased with other second order interactions may be aliased with higher order, but they are negligible. So, this gives you a better picture. Intentionally, you have basically uh, done the sign reversal for only one factor, factor D, and that is why the uniquely uh, you are able to effect, uh, estimate the effect of D. Now, if you do it for the all the factors, what will happen? I, given the two data set, you will be able to DLS all the main effects. So, that means, when you do the sign reversal for one factor and then do the experiment again, you have two sets of experimental data using these, you are in a position to find out find out the effects. Uh, effects in the sense, the effect of interest uniquely can be estimated. Okay. So, for then uh, other one is the full fold over design where you do all sign reversal. So, le let us see that the same thing here to the power 7 minus 4 3 design and here suppose you have done the using the first fraction, first fraction then you have done the experiment and you got these are the experimental results. So, if without going for the sequential experimentation, if you use this one, your estimate is like this. So, if you see the alias structure and the estimated value that A, B and D, which are basically high value. So, we can say A, B and D are large. So, now using the Occam Razor principle, we can say A, B and D effects are significant. Uh, but this is not the unique interpretation because there may be uh, the second order interactions also because A and B significant mean A B interaction may be significant. Similarly, B and D significant mean B D interaction may be significant and A D interaction may be significant. So, then if uh, but as A is inter uh, aliased with B D, so but, but just by seeing this value you can say using a convergent principle that A is significant obviously, but what will happen to B D? You cannot uniquely say that what happened to B D. So, as a result suppose you go for a full, full, full fold over design means here you see that A B C sign conversion from here, here minus plus minus plus minus plus like this, this minus 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 all those this A B C the basic design the sign conversion taken place plus minus plus minus plus minus like this. And as a result you see the D also all cases minus minus A that means, here A B A C and B C they are basically sign reversal is taking place and G because of A B C this sign reversal is. Now, if I go to G it is minus plus minus plus here what happened plus minus plus minus is it is also sign reversal taken place. So, you have done using first fraction your experiment and this is the result. Now, you have gone for full fold over and then your your this is your results. So, from the first fraction what happened from the first fraction you got this from the second fraction you got this. Now, if you if you use this arithmetic that half within bracket i and plus i dash that is mean first fraction and the fold over fraction second fraction then first fraction minus second fraction what are you getting you are in a position to you are in a position to find out all the main effects parameter uniquely estimated 
in addition what you are finding out that the second order interactions are they are basically grouped in a three alias in group of three and and you see that b d c e f g 19 but other values are very very less so we can say this is what is the significant one this b b b d c e and f g but if you see the first order interactions uh, first uh, main effects not first order interactions, main effects only you see the b is significant d is significant but a c e f g they are not significant okay now here if you see that the only the first fraction results a is 20 and this so they are using this you have said or i have said that a is significant because seeing this value high a b and d these three are significantly high so i say a is significant but after doing fold over when we got the second fraction and d alias the effect of a but the effect of A is only 1.48. So, that means then where from this 20.63 is coming? See, there is an, uh, one interaction called BD, and if you see the, uh, the total data after fold over design, so you see that B effect and D effect are significant. So, that means it interaction effect will become significant because here A plus and other, other effect like C, E, and all other main effects are not significantly large. So, if B and D effect is significant then B D interaction is possibly significant and here although A is 1.48. So, from here 20.63. So, B D it B D plus C plus F G is 19.15. Now, here what we are trying to say as C E F G all other effects main effects are negligible it is quite likely that C E and F G effects also will be less, but as B and D effects are significantly high, it is quite possible that B D F significant B D interaction effect is significant and as a result here the B D is bold means we are saying that second order interaction B D is significantly large. So, <coughs> suppose this is bus just by seeing this uh, seeing this uh, um, values a b c d e f g and by seeing that what is the value what i can i say that you can go for normal probability plot also all those things so if you do normal probability plot how many estimates are there suppose from there here you 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 can say that a b c d e f g and b d also from here you can take and then if you do normal probability plot it is quite likely that A, C, E, F, G and uh, this will basically form a straight line and this B effect, D effect and B, D effect this will be falling apart. Means what I mean to say even if you do the half normal also and then if you go for cumulative percent probability and here effect it is quite likely that that A C um, it is quite likely that A C um, the, there will be maybe something like this which is basically C is minus then uh, A is 1 point E is point 0.13 somewhere here. Um, so, minus 1.8 here, 0 0.183 here, and another one that G, then 0 0.50 somewhere here, and then your uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.13, 0 0.50, then 1.48, maybe somewhere here, and in this manner, if you go you plot this line and A B is 38 point anything somewhere here D is 29 20 29 may be somewhere here and B D will be 19 may be somewhere here 19 ok. So, B D will be 19 schemal probability will be this somewhere here. So, what I mean to say if you go for 
go for normal probability plot, you will find out that the these effects are these are significantly uh, higher and as a result they will not follow the um, your plot. Okay, this is normal probability plot. Normal. But if you go for half normal, then the C my negative value will become positive and accordingly you do. Okay. So, otherwise you will use lens method, lens method. So, lens, me lens method uh, we are not discussing, but in the uh, in the, the lens method is a two stage method and you google it and actually uh, you do some some kind of uh, study with yours. Uh, so, the, this is what is basically fold over design. Now, let me uh, let me do uh, this one that what is I am just giving you the gist or summary fold over design. First is you have fractional factorial design. You have chosen a particular resolution and your interest is find out some f x may be primarily primary interest will be all the m a m is main f x then your second order interaction f x so, rarely may be third and higher order interaction third or higher order interaction. Depending on the resolution, what will happen ultimately? Suppose if you choose resolution 3 design, then your main effects will be aliased with second order interaction effects. After the first fraction, so you 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 conduct experiment, conduct experiment using first fraction. So, you get some useful structure. So, like this, and there are some useful values and some alias other alias structure also you will get. So, by, by observing this, you will have certain idea, some preliminary idea will be there. The like here we said that A, B, and D are significant. But what happened as A is interacted with B, D also and B and D is significant. So, it is difficult for example, like, like here you see A, let me go back again, here A, B and D their values are high. Now, as and if I see the alias structure A is interacted with B D, aliased with B D, C E and F G, C E and F G fine, because C E C, F, G, they are main effects are not large, but B, D, both main effects are large, so their interaction effect may be large. So that is the interesting structure. So A, if I say that means primarily A plus B, D, that is the issue. And again, as B, this one is large, and D is also large. So if if we assume that B and D are significant. And then again B case you see that B plus A D as A and D this L, this one with alias is large this may this is also large this may be large. So, then the question is whether B is large or A D is large hmm. and third one is also if you go for D in the D case that D plus A B is there. So, as A and B this with alias is large, we do not know whether it is A large, B large or A B interaction is also large. So, that is what is the interaction structure you are getting. If you get this kind of structure, then what you require? You require to go for sequential experimentation. And in sequential experimentation, you may is you can go for single fold over or full fold over or combination means single means you will reverse only one factor sign reversal full means all 
and combination means sum will be sign reversed not one not full in between ok. So, the then you will get another fraction and when you have another fraction you see the results. Suppose here you see the other fraction a value a value minus b positive and d positive. So, here also see a positive b positive d positive, but their large value the large value part is remain same here, but b and d they are positive, but a sign reversal has taken place here. So, this indicates that the, the, the interesting one these two uh, indicates that ok there is a problem with a and when you you use these two results combine the two, two data set and then finally, finally DLS the factors then what you are getting you see you are getting a effect is negligible b and d effect is significantly large and so then from here you are getting b d effect with some alias is 19.15. So, B D effect is also large that is what is the conclusion. So, that is that is what why this fold over design is important and I, I hope that you are in a position to understand that what is fold over design and why fold over design is used and how fold over design will help you in de-aliasing the uh, some of the main and second order interaction effects and uh, and also how to interpret the uh, interpret the um, effects whether they are significant or not and and obviously you will be heavily uh, using and that probability uh, plotting for effect um, for effects and to get the value whether significant or insignificant or not ok. Okay, I think uh, this is enough for fold over design and please remember I am following the book of Montgomery and you all must purchase the book and follow read the chapters corresponding chapters and you will definitely understand this and I find this a wonderful book. Thank you very much.